Hi everyone, welcome back to the little green pasture. Boy, is it raining outside. Wow. Well, so I know you guys know that I live out here in California and you guys are all hearing about the rain. We live south of where the heaviest stuff is going down and it's coming down heavy nonstop. So I cannot imagine what it's like living up north. I have friends that live up north. Uh, and boy, are they experiencing some things that they're telling me. So my prayers are for everybody that are being affected by this rain. Okay, so I have something I want to say before I get started and before I pray and just go into what I want to talk about, which is going to launch me into what I want to talk about and what I'm moved by. So just so you know, two of my videos were taken down by YouTube. They said that I violated the community guideline standards, the medical ones. And I thought, how is that even possible? Because I know better than to talk about the you know what. Because that's not why I'm here anyway. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the Lord. But the ones that they took down were long before that you know what ever came around. And one of them, I was talking about a conference that I had gone to from some big shot minister. <laughs> I won't say his name, but he there it was a healing event. And so I saw a lot of people who were there and they didn't get what they came for, I'm trying to be careful. And so at some point during that conference, I'm going to spell a couple of words because I spoke about something that happened in the 90s, the mid 90s of people that were infirmed. And I spoke about P. R A Y N G in accordance to that. And it said I violated those standards. I was so blown away. So, what I want to be um, careful to do is to remind you that it's probably a great idea that you go to my Rumble account and my BitChute account and everybody start subscribing to it because who knows? So anyways, the Lord is with me. I trust him completely. He knows that I'm honest and you guys know me by now, which is going to bring me into something I want to talk about. And before I do, I do want to pray and I want to thank the Lord. I want to thank the Lord in the presence of all of you. I want to thank the Lord in the presence of the enemy. And I want to offer up this prayer, this sacrifice of thanksgiving to Jesus Christ, who is my best friend, my best heavenly friend and yours. Father in heaven, I bow before you, the Lord of heaven and earth. And Lord, I just stretch forth my hands unto you. And I thank you. And I offer up a sacrifice of thanksgiving, even of praise unto my God, that many shall see and they shall fear and put their trust in you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every day that you have given me to be alive, to declare your glory, even in the mundane things. I thank you, Lord, that you have allowed me to have this channel and Lord, I've grown so much in this channel in front of everybody. And I just know so many people have grown because of you, not because of me. So therefore, Lord, you know that this, I'm going to say this, everything is committed unto you. This is your channel. This is your little green pasture. It was your idea and I'm yours. And everybody here is yours. Lord, I just pray now. Be glorified in our presence. Be magnified in our bodies, and in our words that we speak about you. And that, Lord, that our lives will always be an offering unto you, bringing the highest praise and honor to your name. And be with me as I speak, because, Lord, I'm just going to speak from my gut today. In your name, I commit and commend all in Jesus' name. 
so before that happened, uh, I have been feeling a real stirring in my heart from Jesus Christ. And it happened this Saturday and Sunday. But I felt myself building up to something. And I've been a believer for well over 45 years. And there's always increase with God. We are to increase in the increase of God. And because I know how he moves and and I know his spirit, I quietly sensed movement within me. No words were spoken. No dreams in the night. No words in my spoken in my inner ear by the spirit. Nothing. But I was absolutely well aware that it was the Lord. And Saturday came around and I felt such a wrestling within myself. Like I wanted to burst out of this flesh suit and go to God. Not death. I'm not talking about I wanted to die. Let me be clear. It was something that my spirit was so moving. And I just wanted, I, I even thought of those words of Job where he said, where may I appear before God? And David spoke words like that. And I felt that, you know, I just, I, I couldn't even pray about it. I, I, I couldn't barely acknowledge it to the Lord in word. I said, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. And even that was, I felt forbidden. Like the Lord just told me, go your way. Um, but I remember on Sunday, no, it was Saturday because Friday I started feeling that. So Saturday, Friday night I tossed and turned, but Saturday I got up and I was struggling even in prayer because I didn't know, I couldn't get it out of me. But anyways, uh, just to bring it to the front, I said to the Lord, I said, I got to break through. I can't just pray. I'm saying what I think I pretty much said because I can't remember word for word because it was coming out of my fiery heart. And I gave this prayer to him and I pushed everything aside and I went straight to the Lord and I told him things about how I felt about him, what I wanted to do with my life, meaning for the last couple of months, I've been really going to the Lord saying, uh, and I know it only takes once. But this is my prayer, and this is between me and him. But I tell him because I want him to hear it from my heart all the time. I said, Lord, I want an absolute surrender of my life to you. I want absolute surrender. And I know it doesn't have everything to do with anything I could do, less or more. It's what you can and will do in me. And so I believe that all these prayers that I've been praying have led up to what happened over the weekend. And I prayed my heart out. It was a 20 minute prayer about that. And I was letting it all come out. I felt like one of the things I will tell you is at my age at 60, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm not a baby in human sense. I've been your friend a long time. And I've lived well over half of my life. And so what I say to you, I say it as a mature believer, veteranized, still growing, still a little child, still clumsy, still making mistakes, never will, because that's I'm in this body. I said, but Lord, I want complete surrender to your throne. All I am is yours. And I went on in a moment and in a moment, I felt something God had taken the prayer. It just, I knew it. And I've experienced that before on random occasions. When there was something very important, I stayed in front of the Lord about. And so I believe that what happened over the weekend with this channel and the videos was a direct result of the enemy. But you know what I did? I said, Lord, this channel doesn't belong to you, to me. It belongs to you. 
and everything I've ever done is yours. And all I am is yours. And also with that, I have noticed that maybe you're experiencing that. Maybe this is speaking to you. Maybe it's speaking to some of you. I don't know. But you know, Jesus is always calling us to come up higher. And the coming up higher is the steep part of the mountain. Now, you may be young in the Lord and say, Joni, I just started out. It's okay. You'll remember what this older saint said to you. Because I am an old woman now. <laughs> you're probably thinking, no, you're not. But I am. I'm 60 now. And maybe by today's standards, that's not a big deal. But when you're 60, you feel you feel your age. And when you're a Christian and you've been serving Jesus Christ and going his way, the way of the cross, our body is dying every day. And our inward man is being renewed and prepared for heaven. And heaven is no dream. Heaven is real. And I intend to go there, but I don't want to go alone. I want the Lord to use me. Even in the Shunem, I call this Shunem, like Elijah's little room that the woman of Shunem built for him with a little, with a bed, a desk, and a chair, and a candlestick. And I refer to this as my candlestick. Are we not the Lord's? Is everything we do an offering to him? You know, in Ezekiel, it talks about the third temple, the millennial temple the millennial sanctuary and it gives an outline of how big it's going to be and the shape and size of it and the suburbs on either side and and it talks about the very center of it being the holy oblation and the word oblation means which is in the holy of holies the holy oblation the word oblation means and it says in the word it talks about it and it talks about uh, says it's whatever a person wants to give. And so I was thinking to myself, Lord, is our lives now, our lives can be a holy oblation to you. My life can be that. Because in essence, really, not in essence, that is what I'm asking. And you know what I really realized? How Satan countermanded that? is that became a great threat to him. I'm nothing. I, 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 you know, I've spent years in the Bible, but that doesn't make me anything. Christ is everything. Christ is our all in all. But do you feel something inside of yourself that's moving? You know, it also brings separation where you're being set apart. All of a sudden you feel like you don't want to be with the, even with the Christian crowd. You even feel like you, maybe the things that you're talking to, like about the Lord, all of a sudden people don't, I don't know, there's just, there's like a strange kind of disconnect from your familiar friends, a strange kind of disconnect from this world. And it's real and you can't put words on it, but it's real and you're experiencing it. And these, and you know what else I experienced? my absolute weakness and inability to even speak a word to the Lord. And I knew that is exactly what Jesus wanted me to feel. You know, we fight so hard, don't we? Oh, I feel so weak. Oh, I said it wrong. Oh, I didn't get that verse right. Oh, I, I didn't under, I, I forgot what year the Jews went into captivity. It doesn't matter. Do you want to be obedient to the Lord from your heart? That's all it takes. And you know what it all comes down to? Love. Do you love him? The words Jesus spoke to Peter were not just to Peter. Those words are for you too. Do you love me? You know, I thought about when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he came to his disciples three times. And he says to them, what 
could you not stay awake with me one hour and watch with me one hour? He comes a second time. He says, Peter, he says, you know, he says the same thing to Peter. He says, you know, a few other words about pray, watch and pray for the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is weak. And then the third time he comes around and says, sleep on now, take your rest, arise. They're coming to arrest me. And then after his resurrection in Revel, uh, not Revelation, John 21, it says, and this is the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples. I can honestly say that through the years of my life, it begins with the Lord showing himself first to you. His Holy Spirit convicting you, bearing witness that the words you are hearing, that they are spirit and they are life and they're true. And then you respond to those words in love because God is love. And you respond to those cords of love and the relief of the free gift of eternal life and the assurance of it. Then you go on your life and there's times that Jesus will appear to you in your life. I don't mean manifesting in front of these carnal eyes. I mean, he'll come in again and he'll meet you somewhere in your life. And then it, later in your life, he'll meet you again with new orders, new commands, new call, a new call. To come up higher. You know, I want to make it very clear. You can earn nothing with the Lord. You don't earn anything. We have we can earn nothing. I, the greatest thing we could give to Jesus Christ is being obedient to his word. He's very patient. He'll wait a long time. And he's always working. You know. I'm doing this from my heart, so I'm having some pausing just to think. I believe that Jesus Christ has such an unsearchable love for us that that is the greatest thing that we should ask God for. You know, everybody can say, Lord, uh, gifts, gifts. I remember, uh, you know, give me gifts, give me gifts, give me gifts. But what good are gifts if you don't have the love of God in you? You know, I was thinking about this word over the weekend, and it was such a simple word. Jesus said, this command I give unto you, that ye love one another. And by this will all men know that you are my disciples. It says, by this will all men know you're mine. You're my disciples, not how much you have never missed a day at church, how you've done all these Bible studies and researches. That's it doesn't it doesn't. What's the word I want to use? It just doesn't matter. What matters is our character and our conduct in the power and demonstration of his love because that will make you and me stand out in this hateful world this mean world this world that's so quick to cut us down you know i was i was thinking about uh I was in the book of Philippians and I was compelled to read the whole book this morning, not just my couple of chapters I like to read a day. And he said, this is a prison letter. And Paul is older at this point. And he says in verse 1, 12 through 14, but I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Places and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. You know what? Something starts to happen 
when the Lord starts moving, you can't do it yourself. It's something the Holy Spirit is doing. And you remember I talk, told you about that strange, something's happening, this separation. It says, even in the word, it says the Lord sets apart them whom he chooses. He will set you apart. And that doesn't mean you have anything to do with it. It begins, everything from him begins from within, not without. From within, there's a big difference and there's a big wide gulf because of that, in that. That's why the enemy is so, so out there getting everybody to be so involved in noise, lots of noisy worship music, lots of constant needing to be online, needing to be on the phone, needing constantly to be doing something. And no wonder why the Holy Spirit, his voice is never heard. You know, the dew falls upon, in Numbers chapter 11, it talks about the dew falling upon the grass. While the sun has not risen yet, while it's still in the earliest hours of the morning. And shouldn't the word in itself, I, I think, distill upon our own ears in that quietness? See, Satan doesn't want you to hear a word the Lord is saying to you. That's why he keeps you busy. That's why every time you want to read your Bible, somebody walks in the door. That's why every time you try to pray, all of a sudden he bombards your mind. Don't forget about this. And don't, don't forget who just said that about you. And then he will throw everything at you. He will, he will throw it all at you. Just like the way they took down my videos when I talked about praying in connection with infirmity and what the Lord told us to do about it isn't it interesting and i did read the guidelines and it said prayer connected with any thing with the body is prohibited okay i'll get around it but the point is god is in control god is in control of this whole earth and i'm so glad that he's in control of my life. You know, Paul just said, my bonds are mani made manifest in the palace and all other places. And many of the brethren of the Lord are waxing confident by my bonds. And they're much more bold to speak the word without fear. You see, the enemy always wants to put us in a corner. He takes notice of those. And I'm nothing special again, nothing at all. That as soon as you rise up and you want to go higher to the Lord and you want to really, really, and your heart is being lifted up and you can feel the Holy Spirit in you and you could feel the power of the endless life. And you're tasting of the gifts and the and the powers of of the Holy Spirit and you're walking in his light. Oh, he'll stand up and he will take notice. But no weapon formed against you will prosper. Oh, he'll try. And I don't say that with any kind of like, oh, yeah, he'll try. I do have a proper respect and humbleness when it comes to powers. And I hide myself in the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. But something happens. And I want to talk more about that. What happens to the person because, see, he's in prison and See, the enemy wants to get us in a prison. He wants to keep us as his bond in bondage. He wants to tell us what we're allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do. Even if this YouTube channel didn't even exist, I would still have a life in Christ. And he would still be doing that to my life. And he would still be doing that to your life. Because he doesn't want the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to shine forth that exposes the dark deeds of the enemy. And makes way and makes paths for people to go to Christ, to be saved, to be delivered from the kingdom of darkness and delivered, translated into the kingdom of the beloved son. In verse 30, uh, chapter 3, verse 7 through 10, he says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. And let me say something. 
See, the enemy is going to try to get you to have loss when you start to draw nearer to God. And people are going to start because he'll work on certain people and situations and things to make you feel that you're losing something. But you know what? I think to myself, think about this. Look what Ananias and Sapphira did. Acts chapter 5. They sold some land and they kept it back a part of themselves. And when Peter came to them, he said, why did it, why have you allowed Satan to uh, enter into your hearts and cause you to believe a lie? And look what happened to them. I'm not saying that will happen to anybody. There's a future judgment and people will, they will die just like everybody dies and they'll face a judgment if they die unsaved. The point I'm making is that, let me keep going. He says, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. You see, Jesus says, if you will be my disciples. You know, Jesus was a, the excellent teacher. He still is through his spirit. And notice whenever he spoke to his disciples, he always started with if. Mostly he said if, because he doesn't make you do anything. But he says, if ye shall be my disciple, my disciples, then you will take up your cross daily and follow after me. And I really thought about this. And I said this, I'll just say it what I said to the Lord. I go, what am I going to do with my life? You've seen what I did done to it when I've held on to parts of it and gave you other parts. I said, what do I want to hold on to it for? And you know, God his life is like the rushing it is the holy spirit the rushing mighty wind and he rushes through you with his wind he rushes through you and you 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 are born again and his life comes in and you know that life and you say i don't why do i want to hold on to this why jesus says if you lose your life it says, he said, he that keepeth his life shall lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall find it again. In eternal life. And, you know, I feel like I, it's, it's so interesting because I could feel even now as I'm speaking to you in these last three days, I could feel the Lord and I can feel the enemy. Because I'm that battleground and you're that battleground. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to fear. And not just because that happened to me, but I've been around a long time and I want to encourage you that whatever has happened to you and fallen out to you is only for the furtherance of the gospel. You notice how he says the brethren saw my what's happened to me and now they're more bold to speak about Christ. You see, because your life is a witness. You're bearing witness of the life of Christ in you, how you're handling it. That you're not all over the place. And yes, I used to do that when I get attacked by the enemy. You know, I was, I was all over the place. I call friends, oh, guess what the enemy's doing for to me and this and that. But Jesus uses everything to make you to stand firm and to the end and strong, strong with all might. In your inner man. It's not about reading more scriptures and doing this and that. Yes, always read your Bible. Because that is a great counterman to God. Counterman to the enemy. But I love what he says. I count everything but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. And in this prison letter, this entire prison letter, he's saying, look, I'm in bonds. but." It's only made me more bold. And he was able to write letters. We're reading right now. 
from the Apostle Paul, telling us how to stand firm into the end, how not to take everything so seriously, not to be afraid of what man can do unto us, of what the enemy threatens us with. Praise the Lord. You know, I was telling someone today, I said, you know what? I'm already in heaven. I'm already there. My body's here on earth. My spirit's not here. My soul is here. But I'll tell you, I'm already there. It's as good as done. I'm already there. And while I'm here on this earth, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to work for Christ. And you know, there is a strength that comes in when you make that if choice. You know, he says that that he may win Christ and be found in him. And that he may know him and the power of his resurrection. Listen, there's something that I believe in SEAL training. The first thing they say to the men, you're already dead. You're already dead. I think I think so. Maybe if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. And he says here, you know, and I was thinking about how we have this power in these earthen vessels, and it's an exploding power. It's it's that spirit, the Holy Spirit, his power is called dunamis, meaning power. It's it means explosive power. And so it's hard to hold Christ in. I mean, I know there's many of you, some of you tell me in your comments, oh, I tried to speak to a relative of mine and the relative blasted me because they're of, of a different faith. They yelled at me and people that say their own children scream at them and yell at them and uh, spouses accusing them. But I'll tell you something. Here's what happens to a person. Like I'm just saying for me, it does hurt and it does feel terrible, but something you, you start to be, uh, uh, what's the word conditioned by it and what it does for me is after a couple of days of feeling bad about what was said or who said or what has been the attack has been something always rises up in me that's fierce and it's mighty and it's powerful and it's a source not of my own self it is Christ in me and he causes me to rise up in power and strength and I know it's him and with it comes a joy because you know why everybody he told me one day when i was being grumpy about things i was trying to do in the lord and he stopped me in my tracks and he said everybody that serves me must do so in joy and the joy that he gives he says no man and i say no devil will be able to take it away from you and the human life that we're experiencing you know i felt like this odd feeling of feeling like I was fighting it like and I knew part of it was the enemy like I don't know like I could feel the enemy going oh it's over for you you're going to wake up one day your channel won't even be existing um uh you're going to be forced to do this and that with your life now and this and that and I would fight it the moment it came in I'd be like that was the Holy Spirit never comes to comes in to discourage us ever he comes to raise us up and to lift us up and to tell us that he loves us, that he's our strength, that he's our shield. He's the glory of us. You know, I love these words in Psalm 16. It says, it's 16, 8 through 11, where David says, for I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. Therefore, I shall not be moved. Therefore is my heart glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither will they suffer thy holy one to see corruption. For thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Isn't that beautiful? How it starts off with. I have set the Lord always at my right hand. And David is alluding to heaven. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. 
when you make Christ your right hand. He says, I will stand at the right. He says, he sta David says he stands at the right hand of the poor to defend them. So we are children of his right hand. And we will eventually one day stand at his right hand. You know, one last thing. Many of you, you're trying to convince your loved ones. Somebody sent me an article yesterday about cognitive dissonance. And that means, well, you know what it means. I don't want to get into it. But there was one part where it talked about willful blindness. And I thought that really grabbed me because there is willful blindness where people, you can tell them, look, I have it right here in front of me. Let me show you. And they'll see it with their own eyes open. And they will say, I don't care. I'm not going to believe it. You know, there comes a point where the Lord says, in a way, it's more powerful to be quiet. You know, it says there was silence in heaven for the space of 30 minutes. Talk about terror. Isn't it something about when somebody's quiet? They stand out. They're not loud. They're not talking. But when they talk, people listen. When you start to become quiet around your family and your friends, they'll take notice. The Pharisees said to Jesus, tell us then, are you the Christ? And it said, and Jesus refused to speak to them. Are you the son of the blessed? He wouldn't speak. And I think that rattled them. And so, and so in verse, in chapter 3, 17 through 21, uh, Paul says, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk. So as you have us for an ensample, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation, meaning life, is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And I think, look at his heart, even in prison. He says, and now I tell you weeping. He's weeping. He's not like, hey, look, you know what? You guys are going to end up in destruction and in, the, in hell. He says he was, it says, I tell you now even weeping that they're the enemies of the cross of Christ because he knew their end would be a destruction because their God is the God of their belly, meaning they're their own God. You know, is your life in heaven? Is your mind on things above? Listen, Jesus spoke and said one last thing to me and gave me such comfort yesterday. I was praying to him and I said, Lord, you know, um, I'm getting older and my life has to be taken care of by you to the end because there's things I'm fearful about and I confess it to you. And I, I just stayed right there before him and I was seeking those things that are above After I prayed that prayer, I saw in Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he that hath began a good work in you will be able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And a wonderful peace came over me. Amen. So remember, if you are being churned up in your heart, and you feel all these things I've spoken to you about. It's Jesus. He may not have words to speak to him about it. But that's because he has plans for you. And you can tell if the enemy is attacking you all of a sudden. Don't be afraid of those attacks. The Lord's going to carry out those plans in your life. And nothing can stop him. Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, the depths of his riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments 
Lord, in your ways past finding out. Praise the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and be filled with his love. Amen.